I'm the firstborn child of both my parents. I'm not saying I'm the favorite, but I'm their pride and joy. I grew up in a small town about 25 miles northwest of Tallahassee, our state capital. The population is just under 8,000 residents and the median household income is only $29,000 a year. A third of the residents, mostly black and Hispanic, live below the poverty line. The high school graduation rate is 39% compared to Florida's average of 88%. Needless to say, I should not be standing before you tonight, but I'm a first. I'm the first in my family to be crowned Spelling Bee Champion, an honor that makes me really P-R-O-U-D. I'm the first in my family to graduate from high school with high honors, and I'm also the first to receive an Associate's of Arts degree while in high school. I'm the first to live on a college campus. I'm the first to graduate from college. I'm also the first to move away to another city, leaving my family behind. I am also the first to job hop in my family. Yes, I counted, and in the last 10 years, I've had six different jobs. Do not judge me. I've had some really incredible opportunities, though, like being the first to work for a Super Bowl, shaking Roger Goodell's hand. He's the NFL commissioner. I'm also the first to start a business, and tonight, I am the first to grace the TEDx stage. I have defied the odds. Statistics show that most firstborns are natural born leaders, we're high achievers, and we're very goal oriented. We are outspoken, we are fearless, we are independent. We lean into responsibility and we take initiative. We break generational curses, we shatter glass ceilings, and we are often the heroes in our family story. Many of you may be a first, the first to succeed at such a high academic level, the first to seamlessly balance your academic pursuits with your extracurricular activities and your personal goals, you may even be the first to loudly advocate for a cause that you really care about. Whatever it is, whatever your first, I am sure that you're killing it. Go you. But if you're like me, you are probably also secretly struggling with the weight of being a first. In full transparency, I suffer from high anxiety. I overthink to the point that it paralyzes me. The unrealistic expectations that I set for myself are mind boggling. And I always, always strive for perfection because perfection is the standard, right? I mean, there are eyes watching. People are counting on me. I cannot mess up. No take backs, no pressure. But there is so much pressure. Because when you're the one that is supposed to break the generational curse and shatter the glass ceiling and be the hero in everyone's story, the pressure, the weight, it becomes unbearable. And when it became unbearable for me, I changed my mind. 
funny, not so funny story. When I was in the sixth grade, I decided that I was going to be a pharmacist. I made this decision after I watched my grandmother, Granny, as I affectionately called her, pass away from cancer. I was devastated. I was also an impressionable 12-year-old, so when I overheard my family say that the medications that my granny took helped her cancer but ravaged her organs, I knew that I didn't want any other family to experience that type of pain, that type of loss, and that type of helplessness. So, pharmacy it was. But six years later, when I rejected a pre-pharmacy college program offer, my family was stunned. Oh, and my poor mother, like, she was once able to confidently tell all who would listen what I would actually be when I grew up. And now she had no idea what I would become. And even though I proclaimed it for years, I wasn't passionate about pharmacy. In fact, I was awful, awful at math and science and chemistry and biology and all the things that dealt with the human body. Could you imagine me with my failing grades being your neighborhood pharmacist. Neither could I. So, I took a journey of self-discovery because I needed to figure out who I was and what fueled me. And this was hard because I had to come to terms with all of those unreal unrealistic expectations that I placed on myself, that I allowed my family to place on me, all of those broken promises that I had made my family and this negative self-talk that I had let myself down and I, I had promised to do something that I was now not going to do, it was so loud in my head. But it wasn't until I abandoned the preconceived notions of what should be and replaced those with what is today that I realized that I had more clarity. I became more self-aware. I became more self-confident in my own ability to make decisions that were best for my life. I even picked up this weird, like, empathy for people who were going through similar situations, and I somehow always found the right thing to say. And in the end, the journey was really, really, really transformative. But people were watching, and my family, they were still counting on me. And honestly, they were beginning to question my sanity, rightfully so, but still. The weight of breaking generational curses and shattering those glass ceilings and being the hero in their story, it was so heavy. So? I changed my behavior. Immediately after I graduated from high school, I moved out of my parents' house. I set up shop in my college dorm room and I enrolled in my first on-campus college classes. I was living my best life. I was partying, I was eating McDonald's at 3 a.m., I was sleeping in. It didn't matter that I was sleeping through most of my classes and I was missing exam days. I'm a first, I got this. I did not have this. I was academically expelled one semester before I was scheduled to graduate college. Side note, I also became the first to get kicked out of college. <laughs> How in the world do you tell your parents over Sunday's meatloaf that you got kicked out of college? I did it, duh. Instead, 
I went to my college dean and I begged for a second chance. I mean, through so many tears, I, sir, you just don't understand. I have to do this. I have to graduate. There are people counting on me. What am I supposed to tell my parents? Can you give me a playbook on how I'm supposed to do this? Can you please just let me? I went on and on and on. And I don't know if the poor guy just felt bad for me or if he just wanted me to get out of his office. But luckily, he allowed me to re-enroll. And so I enrolled in more classes than I needed to so I could boost my GPA. I stopped partying. Yes, I stopped partying. No more McDonald's at 3 a.m. My waistline thanked me. And I didn't miss any more classes. I realized that when I was faced with a challenge, with a hardship, I needed to act quickly. It was not the time for me to rest on my, oh, you're first, laurels. I had to kick it into high gear. One semester later, I graduated, became the first to graduate with my bachelor's degree. When I refocused and prioritized my goals, I realized that I could move closer to success. But it wasn't until I began to respect my mind and my body and nourish them for the journey ahead did I actually reach success. And things were getting better. I was feeling great. I was succeeding, but something was still a little off. I felt stifled. And the constant ringing of breaking the generational curse and shattering the glass ceiling and being the hero in everyone's story was still so heavy. And then I realized that I hadn't actually changed my environment. So after I graduated from college, I embarked on my next set and probably the scariest journey of first. I moved 200 plus miles away to a new city. No friends, no family, not even a frenemy to call. I was alone for the first time in my life. And how do you find your people when you don't actually know anyone? I didn't. Instead, I spent every weekend traveling back home to reconnect to what was comfortable. My family, my old friends, my old life. And I became exhausted and more unfulfilled than I'd ever been. And it wasn't until I was downright miserable and almost broke because travel is expensive that I began to embrace my new environment. I spent my weekends learning about the new city, uncovering the cultural phenoms. I also uncovered all of the nuances that it required to be a resident of a new city. I eventually made friends, and I even found a new place to worship. When I made space for my new environment, I learned the importance of inviting good in. I needed that in order to broaden my horizon and grow as a person. And my new environment, it was ripe with opportunities for growth and prosperity. I understood that there were new possibilities for my life. I could do more. I could be more. My creativity was at an all-time high. And the new tribe that I found, oh, they were amazing. They poured into me. They inspired me to think outside the box. They dared me to dream big. And when I did, 
they did not stifle my unicorn dreams with their own personal fears of failure. I was in a new place physically, but I was also in a new place mentally, and I did not realize how much I needed that. Some 15 years later, after all these events, my list of firsts still growing. The first in my family to earn a master's degree, the first in my family to get a passport and travel outside the country. I even convinced my entire family to get passports and travel with me outside of the country. I do not recommend. I was also the first to grow a six-figure business in under two years. It's because I'm constantly retooling my mindset to accept the responsibility of being a first. I kicked perfection. I got rid of all those negative, unrealistic expectations. I began to act more quickly in the face of uncertainty, in the face of challenges. I held on tightly to the tribe that had my back, but I've also allowed space to welcome new tribe members. These things have become law in my life. No exceptions, no ifs, no ands, no buts. Because these things have made me who I am. They've gotten me here to this, to this ever-growing list of first. And see, you and I, we're the same. Whether you're a first or you're a second, or your 14th, we have the power to break generational curses. We have the power to shatter glass ceilings and to be the hero, not only in everyone else's story, but in our own. And it's tough, yes, but we got this. We're leaders, we're independent, we're outspoken, we're fearless, we're resilient. We lean into responsibility, we take initiative. And when it is time, we change our mind, we change our behaviors, and we change our environment because we know that that's how we're going to be the best version of ourselves. We also do this because we also know that there is nothing, and I mean nothing, better than being a first. Thank you.